I was planning on talking about some of the miracles of Jesus, and um, <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm expecting and I'm believing for the miracles to begin to break out and show up. We, we, we've saw these spontaneous worship pockets that are popping up, Asbury, Lee, Summit, several of the other colleges. But I, I, and, and I want to prophesy to you to tell you what the next, next phase is going to be where there's spontaneous miracles just beginning to happen and pop up all over the place. The gifts of the Spirit, the manifestations of the kingdom of God just popping up sporadically all over the place. Last previous moves like we saw with uh, Azusa Street or uh, Pensacola or Toronto, uh, Toronto lasted over 10 years. Uh, what, what we see with these specific movements was you had to go to a specific place for a specific to experience what was going on here on, on, in that place. But what, what's going to happen next is you're not going to have to go to a, a specific, uh, a, a specific, one specific church or one specific ministry to get it. There's going to be such an outpouring, as Joel said, Joel in Acts chapter number 2, in the last days I pour out my spirit on all flesh, not because everybody's so good and everybody's so perfect and everybody gets it together. It's because he's good and he's awesome and he's wonderful, and it's not because we do it. It's all about him. Jesus is the hero of the story 100% of the time. Ah. <laughs> mm. So let, let's, let's talk about this for a minute. John chapter number 2, look at verse number 11. John 2 and 11, and it says, um, Jesus performed this first sign in Canaan of Galilee, and he displayed his glory. Let's pause and reflect on that. He performed a sign, but actually the sign was a display of his glory. He performed the sign, but the sign revealed glory. And his disciples believed in him, or their believing went to a higher capacity after they saw the sign, which was a display of his glory. The purpose of the sign, the wonder, the miracle, the outpouring is to get our faith, to get our believing, to go to a higher level, to a higher dimension. Somebody said, well, you know, I saw this take place and I saw this miracle take place. Oh, oh, oh okay, that's great. That's great. Did it cause if it did not cause your faith to go to a higher level, to a higher place of believing, so that you're walking into a greater reality of the kingdom of God, then it was really pointless. Because it's pointless to see a miracle, a sign, a, a healing, uh, whatever this manifestation of the kingdom of God is, without bringing noticeable, recognizable change and transformation inside of our heart. Matter of fact, Jesus said it like this. He said, woe unto Capernaum and, and these cities, his hometown. He said, because if the miracles that were done here were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. Which tells me the purpose of the miracles, the signs and wonders, is to get people to a place of repentance or change the way that they think and that they're doing business. And we, Jesus said if these miracles that are done in Capernaum, which was his hometown, was done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented. Which tells me... There was nobody in Sodom and Gomorrah performing miracles. You know, we, we like to talk about cities that are, we like to talk about cities in California. We like to talk about cities throughout the nation and, and throughout the world that are evil, vile cities. What if, what if 
It's the performance of the kingdom of God. When the, when the miracles of God are displayed in those cities, what if, what if the only reason they're like they are is because nobody's stepping out into displaying and manifesting the kingdom of God? And the kingdom is the remedy for every city in this nation and around the world. As we see this, Jesus performed these signs, which was a display of his glory. Now, the sign always points to something that is greater. There's three takeaways from this passage. A sign always points to something greater. We cannot stay camped out at the sign. The sign points to something greater. The second thing, the sign is a display of his glory. And then number three, the purpose of that sign, which is the display of his glory, is to take our believing into a greater, uh, greater measure or a greater past capacity. Look at the first thing here now. A sign points us to something greater. When you're driving down 75 and you see the Florida state sign, and you see this sign. How many of you saw this sign or one really similar to that one right there? Now, wouldn't it be foolish, wouldn't it be foolish to be traveling down 75 and your destination is the beach and you get and you see this sign and you pull the e-brake, whoo, you do a circle, two, 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 you stop, you go back and all you do your whole vacation is you just sit there and look at that sign. Are you really going to get to enjoy the food? Are you going to get to enjoy the beaches? Are you going to get to enjoy what's available for you in that state if you just stay parked at the sign? But yet in the church, that's exactly what we do. There is a sign, there is a wonder, there is a display, and people want to park there at the sign but yet the sign is always pointing to something greater. And the sign points to something. And the greater is Jesus and the manifestation of his kingdom on this earth. <laughs> Imagine this. You see this next. <laughs> Have he's ever been here? <laughs> The rest of you don't want to admit it, huh? All right. <laughs> the happiest place on the earth. Oh, well, a few years ago, a few years ago, um, uh, found out that they spent one billion, bill, billion, B, billion <laughs> on, the, on the Star Wars things. I'm like, I got to go see this stuff. It was the most fascinating thing that I've, I've ever saw. And <clears throat> But... What I noticed about this is that when you're driving and you see the sign, notice the parking lot is nowhere around. The rides are nowhere around. you got to go a couple of miles past that right there before you even get into what's available. Now, whether you like Disney or not, I'm using this analogy to get a point across. Many people still stay parked at the sign instead of going on in to see everything that is available to us. And the sign only points to something that is greater that is ahead. According, the second thing that we looked at this morning is the sign is a display of glory. It's a sign, the sign was a display of the glory. So the sign sets the stage for the revelation of glory. Colossians 2, 26 and 27 says it like this, The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to the saints... Now, the saints are not people who have died and went on to heaven because all of the Gospels, the New Testament Gospels and the Epistles were addressed to the saints. The saints are the people who are following Jesus, who are, who have, who are born again. So there was a mystery that was hidden for ages and for generations, but this mystery is now being revealed to the saints or those who are born again, followers of Christ, 
God wanted to make known among the Gentiles the glorious wealth of this mystery. Here's the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if the sign was a display of glory, we've got to define and we've got to figure out what glory is because if Christ in you is the hope, it didn't say the manifestation, it said it's the hope. Of glory, we, we, we need to understand what glory is. You, you see, in, the, in, in many years ago in, in church, we would sing songs like just over in the glory land. And, and, and we would use the word glory in heaven as interchangeable words. But according to Psalms chapter number 8, verse number 1, that, that God has set his glory above the heavens. So, so there's something that's greater than heaven, and it's called glory. And we're talking about that it would be on earth like it is in heaven. And as good as it is in heaven, there's still something greater than heaven, and it's called glory. And Colossians says it like this, that Christ in you is the hope of glory. What, what? <laughs> so when you read Psalms 8, you, it, it really mess you up in a good way. Because he says, When I consider the heavens and the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is mine that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you visited him? Verse 5, You have made him a little lower than the angels, and you've crowned him with glory and honor. Now, if you look at that verse right there, it's kind of exciting to know, okay, King James, we are made a little lower than the angels. But when you go back to the original text in the Hebrew text, it says that word angel is Elohim, which is the same word in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So actually that should read in Psalms 8, 3, and 4 that, that you have made man a little lower than Elohim. I know y'all get, you have to process this just for a minute. Process. Because, okay, here's the order. There's God, there's the angels, and then there's man. Okay, what if that order is incorrect? What if it is God... Man and angels. Because in Genesis 1, he didn't put an angel in charge of the earth and tell the angel to take dominion and make what was available on this planet, make what was available in the heavens, make it available on the earth. And the same way that God ruled the heavens, that man was to... He didn't tell an angel to take dominion over the earth and rule it the same way that God rules the heavens. He told man to do that. And actually, if you look into this, the angels of the Lord bless the Lord. He says in, 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 in Hebrews chapter number 1 that the angels of the Lord are sent on special assignments for our protection to guide us and to direct us and to help us and to assist us. But th this order, understanding out of the gate... That God crowned Adam with glory. He was clothed and covered with glory. And the glory of God was what empowered him to take dominion, to be fruitful, to multiply, to subdue, and to replenish the entire earth. It was the clothed, it was being clothed with the glory, crowned with the glory of God that enabled him to do that. So when Adam sinned, Adam didn't lose heaven, he didn't lose faith, he didn't lose hope. What he did lose is he lost glory. Because Romans chapter number 3, verse number 23, it says, all have sinned. Sin and fell in short of what? The glory. So what's missing? Hey, mm -mm -mm. what's missing in mankind is not hope for heaven, but glory manifested on the earth here and now. Now, now Psalm says it like this. We are crowned with glory. 
Now, this, this kind of preaching is what, what got Jesus crucified. When he started coming and confronting the Pharisees and said, Your scripture says, <laughs> X, Y, Z. Why you have a problem with me saying that I'm a son of God when scriptures say that we are gods? Don't shout me down just yet. That's what, that's what really got him crucified. They definitely struggled with him saying he was the son of God. But then when he came back and quoted Psalms 82 and said, You are G-O-D-S. You are Elohims. Why? Because Adam was placed on this planet to rule, reign, and have dominion here in the natural realm the same way that Yahweh had in the heavens. And he ruled it with his words. So Adam fell. What happened? Immediately they understood that they were naked. Were they not naked before? No, they were not naked before. They were clothed with the glory. The glory of God covered them. But Romans 3.23 Sin entered, we fall short of the glory. But there's good news. Colossians 1.27, Christ in you is the hope of glory. So to get us back to the original state of man, God sent his son, the perfect, spotless lamb of God, he was covered in humanity. He was 100% man, but he was 100% God. That's what the Word says. As a man, he walked on water. I'm impressed if he did it as God, but as a man, he did it. As a man, he got tired at the well and sat down and told the woman, man, uh, you drink of this water, and you're going to thirst again. But if you drink of the water that I give, it'll spring forth a well of living water. He's, 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 fl he's flowing back and forth between humanity. I'm limited as a human. But I have an unlimited ability on the inside of me. So, so, so what happens as we see this, Jesus is the prototype of the new creation. That is filled with the glory. It is the glory that is above the heavens that man was crowned with to take dominion over the whole earth. <laughs> you look at Genesis chapter number 1. For five days, for five days, Things go without any type of identity until Adam shows up. And, and, and I'm going to give you the Michael Watkins translation. God said, whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be. You begin to speak. You begin to release your words. In the, in the Hebrew translation, it says that Adam began to, began to repeat what God said. Monkey come by. God says, oh, that's a monkey. Adam says, boom, it's a monkey. It became a monkey. <laughs> that's exactly, it, that, that was this identity. He, what he said, what he said it was, that's what it became. But he was only repeating what God had already spoke to him that it was. That's the partnership of heaven and earth. Heaven coming to earth. Man clothed with the glory of God. So we see number two. The purpose of that sign was to reveal the glory. And understand the glory that was lost is now come back with Jesus. And Jesus in the garden prayed in John chapter number 17, the glory that you have given me, I give to you. Mm. Now watch this, watch this. So, 
2 Corinthians 4, 16, Therefore we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, the inward man is being renewed day by day. Verse 17, Because our light affliction, which is just for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I consider Romans 8, 18 and 19, I consider the sufferings of this present time not worthy to be compared to the glory which is going to be revealed in this. For the earnest expectation of creation waits for the revealing of the sons of God. The sons of God cannot be revealed without glory. Do you understand in the book of Psalms where it says, give God glory? Now you got to understand what kind of glory that you possess before you can give it to him. <laughs> glory! So look at this. There was a sign that was a display of glory which brought the disciples to a greater capacity to believe. Now, if John chapter number 2 is the first recorded miracle, what happens in the first recorded miracle? Jesus, his boys, mom, invited to the party and to the wedding feast. You all know the story. What happens in the, what they run out of in the middle of the, in the celebration. They ran out of wine right in the middle of it. See, I'm just here to tell you that religion's running out of wine. <laughs> religion's running out. Self-help is running out. <clears throat> if you could have did it, you would have already did it. It's not about rules it's about relationship with the resurrected Jesus Christ religion in itself is running out of wine and Jesus says uh oh I've got something available to you it's called new wine <laughs> and 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 so in the middle of this what's fascinating is that they're running out Mary comes to Jesus and says hey Jesus they're running out of wine Jesus says, it's not my problem. It's not my problem. This messes me up right here. Mary acted like Jesus said, okay, I'm going to do something about it and fix it. <laughs> Read the story. Because she acts like she didn't even hear Jesus say that. She turned around to the waiter and said, come here. Whatever this guy tells you to do, do that. To me, that was some dominion right there. <laughs> Where she made up in her mind, this is what's fixing to happen. I can prove it because Jesus said this miracle is not even on the schedule. Who scheduled, oh my Lord, who scheduled the first miracle? Was it Daddy? Was it Jesus? No, it was Mary. You know how your mama is? <laughs> well, she wants something. She's good. She's like, oh, 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 I know this on, on the itinerary. I know you got a full schedule. I know you're busy doing your stuff. But come on over here because we're fixing to do this right now. Whatever he says does it. So, so they find six barrels, six clay jars that were empty. Jesus says, Jesus evidently acts like he didn't just say that it ain't my time and it ain't my problem and I'm not going to do nothing. He acts like he didn't even just say that because now after mama sets him up, he turns right around and says, fill those, fill those barrels up. After they did that, there were six of them, six the number of man. The emptiness of man when we are depleted and have done everything that we know to do. There is an infilling of the Spirit of the Lord, a transformation that's an inside job that he can take the emptiness, the, the hollowness, the, 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 the void that was on the inside, and he can start doing some heart transplants and some heart changes. Aren't you glad that God's still in the business of doing heart transplants and transformations? And, 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 and he says, now, now that those are filled with water, take it to the head waiter. Head waiter says, my Lord, this is right opposite. Most people 
will set out the best stuff first. After everybody's half lit, then they'll take the bad stuff, and everybody won't know the difference. Nobody will know the difference. But what you've done is you've saved the best for last. What if the best days of the church and you and Northwest Christian Fellowship and Dalton and Georgia, the East Coast and the United States of America and around the world, what, what, what if, what if the best moves and the best wine have yet to be poured out in the body of her? What if he's really saving the best for last? And what if he's really moving us from faith to greater levels of faith, from glory to greater levels of glory so that there is such a manifestation of his power and his presence. Uh, everybody will look and say, I know it has to be God because you are weak. You are this. You are that. But look what the Lord has done. See, I've, in our weakness, that's when he's made strong. In our weakness. Four, four, four takeaways right here on this. Is the first miracle took place inside the jar. The first miracle, the miracle of transformation, is an inside job. You may look in the mirror after you got born again and you still see, oh, I still got a wrinkle right there. I see have a pimple right there. I still have some no hair right there. You may look at everything, maybe looking the same on the outside. But the first miracle of Jesus was an inside job. And the first miracle inside of you, what if this sets a pattern? The first miracles, the cycles of miracles, it always begins on the inside. I believe on the inside there is a hunger and a desire building throughout the body of Christ, throughout the bride of Christ. That's saying, come Lord Jesus. Uh, Revelation said it like this, when the spirit and the bride say come, Jesus comes. I believe there is a, a hunger and a desire on the inside. There's something that he's doing on the inside of us. It's an inside job. That's the first place he starts. It's an inside job. It's an inside job. It's an inside job. The next thing, what Mary said, whatever he says, do it. God's going to move at the speed of your yes. He's always going to move. He can either work with you or he can work around you. And I'm telling you, that's where it's going to be. You're either going to be on board with what he's doing or it's going to totally bypass you. Because he's like, I never saw it like this before. I never saw it like that before. Same. We better we better just be using the word of God as our filter. And if it's as long as it lines up with the word, man, it's 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 good. It's good. Whatever he says, do it. Brad was sharing a testimony this morning in the 845 and how he was driving down the road and he was going to turn off onto the left. And uh, the Lord said to him to keep going straight. And I thought... <laughs> That's so like Kim. Whatever he says, you may be having all these plans of where you're going to go and where you're turning off. But, but right before you get to that exit, right before you get to that road, he may be saying, uh-uh, keep going straight. He, whatever he says, that's what we got to be doing. That's what we got to do. And then number three, the purpose of that miracle, the sign, the wonder, is, is, is so that we could fully believe, full Full believing took place after this inward transformation. And then the fourth one, he's saving the best for last. What if he's really saving the best? What if the best is still yet to come in your life? 
How many believe the best is still yet to come? The best is still yet to be. You still, you, the, the best ideas. I'm going to talk to some uh, business folk in here right now. The, your best ideas and your best inventions have not been back here. They're still yet to be revealed. Come on. The best is yet to come. The best is truly yet to come inside. Thank you.